Welcome to Watch Therefore, the program designed to help the disciple of Messiah Jesus obey his command to watch therefore and be ready for you don't know the hour or the day the Son of Man is coming, coming to take us back to that place he's prepared for us. Dove Schwartz here at the Sea of Galilee, encouraging everyone who's watching today more than ever to watch therefore and be ready. stars his right hand welcome to watch therefore today we're going to do something special today and we have a special guest that I'm going to introduce in just a moment uh, while so many, uh, sadly and tragically, are against the rapture, and even in the body of Christ. It's just amazing to me how many are against the rapture or not excited about the rapture and have, have some views that I think are very different than the views the Word of God teaches about the rapture. We need to be getting ready for the coming of the Lord in the clouds for His people. And, and, and the Bible says, Therefore the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, a trumpet of God. The dead in Christ will rise first, then we who are alive remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we always be with the Lord. And, and those words caught up in the Greek, which the New Testament was originally written in, was translated into Latin, and the Latin word there that is translated into English, caught up, that's where we get the word rapture. Mm. That's where we get the word rapture. So if you don't like that word and you like caught up better, praise God. But what we're introducing today and we're going to do these every so often. This is going to be a rapture preparation segment on Watch Therefore. And we have our rapture preparation specialist <laughs> with us today, Dr. Andy Woods. Great to be with hey, you. Hey, it's always a joy. And uh, Andy is also uh, the senior pastor at Sugarland Bible Church in Sugarland, Texas, where we're recording today. And... Uh, and, and, and Andy, I'm so thankful that you're going to be with us talking about the rapture, preparing us mm -hmm. today for the rapture. Well, I can't think of a more uh, important subject to deal with. Absolutely. Because the rapture, as the, the Bible portrays it, is any moment. Absolutely. And, you know, we're really not told to look for the Antichrist. We certainly see signs that the world is being prepared for the Antichrist. But if the rapture precedes that time period, which we believe it does, the rapture is the next event on the prophetic horizon. And I want you to share about that in this segment. We're going to have a word of prayer in a moment, but I agree with you wholeheartedly. I'm not looking for the Antichrist. I'm looking for Jesus amen, Christ. Amen. I, I know who he is. I don't know who the Antichrist is, but I know who Jesus amen. is. He's the one that saved me, amen. and that's who I'm looking for. Let's have a word of prayer, shall Please, we? Yeah. We thank you, Holy Father, in Messiah Jesus' name. Thank you for all of our viewers. Please bless them today. And, and thank you for this rapture preparation segment opportunity we have. May we reach out and grab a hold of this opportunity today, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Andy, would you please share with our listeners in this segment why we should be getting, for the rap getting ready for the rapture, what it is, whatever's on your heart mm -hmm. with regard to rapture preparation today? Well, one of the things you brought up earlier was uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18, where we get the word caught up. <clears throat> it's interesting, the Greek there is harpazo. And I was sort of curious or very interested to learn that the English word that we get from harpazo is the word harpoon. Really? Yeah, where you, where you kind of stick uh, that into a, a fish or whale or whatever it is you're trying to catch. Might be not a whale, might be a little big, but you pull it to yourself, you know. Yeah. And so that's basically what the rapture is. It basically comes from the Greek word uh, harpazo, which means to be seized or caught up by force. Wow. And folks will see that in First Thessalonians four thirteen through eighteen. And you're right. When that word was translated from Greek into Latin, 
that's where we get sort of a similar sounding word, uh, rapturo. Some would say it's repere. Right. <clears throat> and then when the Latin Vulgate was translated into English, we get the word rapture. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people will kind of give you a hard time and, and say, well, I don't, I don't see the word rapture in the Bible. Right. Well, I don't see the word trinity in the Bible either, but well, I, I believe see, in the trinity. I see the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit yeah, there yeah, all day long. Absolutely. So the concept is there, and that's where sure. the word comes from. But, you know, the big discussion today is the pre-trib rapture. Mm -hmm. We believe the rapture will precede the seven-year tribulation period. Yes. And most people today, when they say, I don't believe in the rapture, well, they, they do believe in it. They just don't, they just put it in the wrong place. Right. They, they, they merge it with the second coming or mm -hmm. something like that. But we believe that the rapture will precede what's called the 70th week of Daniel. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are many, many reasons why I think that's true. But probably the main reason is when you go into the 70 weeks prophecy, Daniel 9, 24 through 27, mm -hmm. 483 years elapsed, seven years yet future remaining. Who does that whole clock revolve around? Well, uh, Gabriel told Daniel, 77s are decreed for your people and your city. Mm -hmm. Daniel was Jewish, as, mm -hmm. as we all know. So the seven-year tribulation period, which is part of the 70 weeks, concerns the nation of Israel. That's right. And it concerns the city of Jerusalem. Absolutely. It doesn't, doesn't concern Sugarland Bible Church <laughs> or right. First Baptist or Second Baptist or 800th Baptist <laughs> of whatever. It's very clear that it concerns the nation of Israel. And yes. that's why when you get into material related to the 70th week, which we find expounded really in the book of Revelation, chapters 6 through 19, you don't find the word church a single time that's right. in that time period. I like you have a special teaching on that that yeah. I've listened to that one day you're going to have. And as much as you'd like to share with it today, certainly feel free. It's so important to understand these things. Right. Well, the word church is used probably 19 times in chapters 1 through 3 of Revelation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's the section governing the church, dealing with the church, the seven letters to the seven churches, mm -hmm. etc. But then when you get into that section that pertains to the tribulation period. Jacob's trouble. Jacob's trouble. And then, then the word Jacob. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeremiah 30, verse 7, mm -hmm. would concern Israel. Uh, the church isn't even mentioned right. in that time period. If it's hinted at at all, the word church isn't there. If it's hinted at at all, it should be in heaven, right. never on the earth. And isn't it interesting how that section of Scripture gets very Jewish? It certainly does. You get 144,000 CLC Jews is. from the 12 tribes. Mm -hmm. I don't under, I don't see why I can't take that literally. Yeah, I think you should. And then, <laughs> and, and then you've got two witnesses who look an awful lot like Moses and, and Elijah, Elijah to me. That's right. Revelation 11. Sounds kind of Jewish. Sounds very Jewish. And then you have Satan being removed from heaven. You know, Satan apparently can still go into heaven mm -hmm. to accuse. Mm -hmm. That position or privilege is removed halfway through Revelation 12 and he goes after not the church uh, why doesn't he go after the church Paul says we wrestle in Ephesians 6 not against flesh and blood but could it be because we're not on the <laughs> earth right. I mean that's a crazy concept yeah. but I think that might be it yeah and <laughs> he, he goes after the woman who's clothed with the sun and the moon and the 12 stars and you and you track that with Joseph's dream in Genesis, Genesis 37, 9 and 10. Uh, it refers to the nation of Israel. Israel. So what I'm trying to say is the reason I'm a believer in the pre trib rapture is the 70th week revolves around Israel. And that's why in any uh, section of the Bible that you look at, Revelation, uh, Ezekiel 38 and 39, you name it, the church isn't there. Not only is the word church not there, but the concept of the church being the body of Christ really isn't mentioned on the earth. And the whole action revolves around the nation of Israel. That's so right. that's probably understanding the distinction between Israel and the church probably is the primary reason that I'm not just a rapturist, but I believe that the rapture, the harpazo, the harpooning, if I could put it that mm -hmm. way, sure. the snatching away will take place before this seven-year period even starts. Hallelujah. So well said, Andy. And with the remaining time of this segment, that being the case, what you're saying, we should be ready any moment for the Lord to call us up. Right. 
You know, the uh, late John Walver, the great defender of the pre-trip rapture, had a <clears throat> sign in his office. It said, perhaps today. Hallelujah. Wow. Think of it. Think of it. Perhaps today. Yeah. And, you know, if I had another view, let's say I believe the rapture was going to happen halfway through the tribulation. Or that it couldn't happen until then. I'd have to say perhaps in 42 months or more. Right. <laughs> I love it. But, we're, love it. but, you know, when you think about it, we are the only view out there that says Jesus can come back in the next split second. You just hit on why I can't accept some of these other doctrines. And when people start sharing them with me, I say, well, let me, let me just ask you this one question. With your belief, can Messiah Jesus come for us in the clouds today? And they say, absolutely not. I say, I can't take it. I can't right. receive it. Why? Because he wants me to watch, therefore, and be ready right. today. That's right. And if your doctrine is not conducive to me doing that, then it could be a very unnecessary distraction for me. That's right. You know, we're to the name of your ministry, watch, therefore. Uh, Paul in Philippians 3 Verse 20, we're eagerly awaiting a Savior oh, from heaven. It could happen in the oh, next split second. Oh, so, Well, um, Andy, it's it's such a pleasure to have you on Watch Therefore today. And and uh, I think this has been great rapture preparation today. Right. And, and so, like I said in the prayer at the beginning of our time together today, reach out and grab onto the reality that perhaps today. That's right. And, and at that point, you can live accordingly. And it'll be a blessing to live for Messiah Jesus, watching for him to come, preparing for him to come as if he could today, because he could today. Amen. So remember uh, to watch their form. Be ready. We're going to go to break in just a moment, have some very important things to share with you in this break. Don't miss it. And then we'll be back uh, with some more teaching and insightful things to bless you Amen. just before the coming of our great Messiah Jesus. Watch therefore and be ready. Joe Schwartz here with Watch Therefore Ministries, introducing my new book, Watch Therefore and Be Ready. In a generation that is about to be so caught off guard by the events of the fig tree days of Noah generation. Know this, it doesn't have to be you. I wrote Watch Therefore and Be Ready to prepare followers of Messiah Jesus to be who they are and to do what they have been set here to do just before the coming of Messiah Jesus. And that's why for a donation of any amount to Watch Therefore Ministries, Blessing Israeli Believers Poured Out for the Nations, what we will do is send a copy of Watch Therefore and be ready. Make sure you mark in your checker on the internet the name of the book, Watch Therefore and Be Ready, to receive your copy. Now, like never before, it's time to watch therefore and be ready. I'm so thankful for this powerful and timely Watch Therefore message, where in Matthew 24 and Matthew 25 in the New Testament Gospel, Messiah Jesus tells his disciples to watch their form, be ready, for we don't know the hour or the day the Son of Man is coming. Certainly the other signs that he spoke of just before that are, are bouncing in the red zone today like never before. And he tells his watch therefore and ready disciples to be the faithful servant. They're watching for the master to come and they're doing what the master commanded. And when they stand before him at the judgment seat of Christ, they will hear, well done, thy good and faithful servant. This message is expanding. People are embracing it all over the world with a strong desire to be the faithful servant. And, and it costs lots of money as the TV program is also expanding into other markets. First, I want to say, if you haven't received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, please don't send any money into this program. It's our desire that you would receive him as Lord and simply enjoy the program today. But for those of you who would like to lay your treasures up in heaven, this is a great place to do so. And we encourage you to sign up for our monthly newsletters. Uh, you can do so at our watchtherefore.tv website. And when you receive our Blessing Israeli Believers and Poured Out for the Nations letters, you can know how to pray for and financially sow into 
uh, this ministry. Blessing Israeli believers is our to the Jew first ministry, as Romans 1.16 says, the gospel and discipleship is to the Jew first. John McTurnan, our co-founding Blessing Israeli Believers partner and I, uh, are so excited about this ministry in Israel. And then our poured out for the nations, to the nations ministry, where the Watch Therefore message is also proclaimed and being embraced so widely. And it, it's expanding. It's so exciting as we're in this generation that we'll see King Jesus come in the clouds because the signs that he spoke of in Matthew 24 and other places are bouncing in the red zones like never before. King Jesus is coming and we need to get ready. There, <laughs> there's not a better way to do so than understanding and embracing the watch therefore message. So remember, now like never before, watch therefore and be ready. King Jesus is coming. Welcome back to Watch Therefore. In this part of the program, I'm going to continue teaching God's Word from my book, Watch Therefore and Be Ready. And that book is mostly God's Word. That's uh, the biggest part of the book is, is Scripture. And I taught last time on Matthew chapter 23, the last few verses, into the first few verses of Matthew chapter 24. And what I'm going to do is what I like to call review, read, to bring us up to the place where we're going to teach today in God's Word. So in Matthew chapter 23, beginning verse 37, our Lord Jesus is warning Jerusalem, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent her. How often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. See, your house is left to you desolate, for I say to you, you shall see me no more till you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came up to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said to them, Do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Well, as I taught last time, our Lord Jesus was, was warning his disciples, everything you know is about to change. The center of your worship, the temple, is going to be torn down. Jerusalem will be destroyed. Uh, we know that the Jews were also cast out of Israel into the nations of the world where many still remain. Those many have also been regathered to a physically rebirthed Israel that is waiting for the spiritual birth. Israel must be born again. And Messiah Jesus says that Jewish people will be back in Jerusalem calling for him, blessing him as he comes. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And certainly we know the temple was destroyed in 70 AD as the Lord predicted. But much of what he said is future in the near future from where we are right now. And his disciples ask him, what will be the sign of these things? The, the end of the age and, and, and his coming to, as they would understand it, set up the kingdom of David for Jesus the Lord, the son of David, to sit on the throne of David. So he answers them, and that's where we're going to begin today in verse 4 of Matthew 24. And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will, de will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. Now the reason I'm going to stop here is because it's important to stop here, and many prophecy teachers do not. Why is it important to stop here? Because our Lord Jesus says there's going to be crazy things that are going to happen. Things are going to be very destructive and painful and, and, and shake regions of the earth even. But they are not signs that the end of this age is imminent. And the end of this age culminates with Messiah Jesus returning to sit on the throne of David in Jerusalem. But something happens in verse 7, and things do change. And, and I want to begin to talk about that today. Verse 7, For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. And where it says the beginning of sorrows there, uh, that's a very old English way of saying the beginning of birth pangs. In verse 7, 
things shift to end time signs and scenarios that are signs of the coming of Messiah Jesus to end this age and to sit on the throne of David. And I'm going to talk about this first one primarily today. He says, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. But the Bible was initially translated, uh, uh, or written, excuse me, the Bible was initially written in the New Testament in Greek. And so the Greek word for nation is ethnos. Makes us think of the word ethnic, doesn't it? So in other words, he's saying ethnic group will rise against ethnic group and kingdom against kingdom. This is also an ancient Hebraism of global war, global war. So he says uh, there, there will be global ethnic war. Well, there's been war down through the ages. Since there has been humanity, there's been war. But what makes this different is that this kind of war, this global war will begin to take place in concert with these other signs. These things that have been happening down through time, through the course of humanity, famine, pestilence, diseases, earthquakes, but they will all be taking place like they never have before, like birth pains, because birth pains increase in frequency and intensity until there's a birth. Yes? And so it is with these end time signs of the coming of the Lord, things that have happened down through humanity, but they're happening now like never before and in concert with one another. So I'm going to look at the one that I, that's first here, birth pains, ethnic group against ethnic group, birth pains. And, and so think of this, with World Wars one and two, we have global war like never before in history. Think of this, just the deaths, not the, the uh, injuries or, or casualties of war that would include um, uh, great, great injury, just the deaths, 75 million deaths in World Wars I and II. 75 million deaths. And, and since then, hundreds of, mil hundreds of millions of people have died in ethnic violence and war. Uh, there, of course, was the Holocaust, 6 million Jewish people, but many more millions also killed in World War II. The, the Korean War, under Stalin of the Soviet Union, the dictator Stalin, they estimate 12 to 60 million. Dictators don't put out a, 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 an exact number. They try to hide <laughs> the number of people they're murdering. But it's estimated 12 to 60 million under Stalin. Then China under Mao Zedong, 49 to 78 million people killed. And then later the killing fields in Cambodia, and then Bosnia and Serbia. Folks, this is just a snapshot. There's much more. Then Rwanda and the Congo and Burundi. I was, I've been in Rwanda. We've done a lot of ministry in Rwanda. Think of this. One million Rwandan Tutsis killed in 100 days by the Hutus. Ethnic genocide, which spilled over into the Congo under, into different uh, ethnic uh, militias. Five and a half million killed in the DRC Congo. I've ministered there, I have friends there. I've met these people who have survived it with hatchet marks from here all the way to here in their head. Oh, oh folks, it's, it's brutal. And, and of course, in Burundi, I've ministered there. About a half a million killed there. And it's all these places and many more are, are at the edge of war right now. In my book, I list the, some of the ethnic military hotspots in the world today. And the world today is strung up like a, 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 like a banjo strings, ready for World War III, strung tight, ready to snap. Now, uh, uh, King Jesus is coming, folks. He's coming soon to give Israel and the nations the new birth. But the birth pangs today of ethnic violence are shaking the earth. My goodness, even look at America. Look at, at the United States. 
with the ethnic tension in America today. Folks, it's going to get worse. Now, I'd love to, I'd, listen, I'd love to tell you a happy story right now. I'd love to, to tell you um, how, how, how wonderful the earth is going to be um, next week, next month, next year. But the reality is you don't want to be here for the final stages of this birthing process. And I have some good news. I do have some good news in Luke 21, 34. Jesus, our Lord, said, but take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and cares of this life. And that day come on to you unexpectedly, for it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch, therefore, and pray always that you may be kind of worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Truly, our Savior is coming in the clouds for his people. Truly, there is a rapture of the church. And truly, even for those who would say to me, you're some kind of escapist. You just want to escape the trouble that's coming. Guilty as charged. Jesus, our Lord, said, pray. Watch their form, pray that you would be counted worthy to escape all these things that are coming to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Are you ready? Are you watching for, for him to come? Do you know that you'll go when he does? If not, cry out to him today, Jesus, save me. I'm a sinner. You died on the cross for our sins. I don't want to go through hell on earth and then hell, hell, uh, the real thing, forever. No, I want to be forgiven for my sins and saved. Lord Jesus, save me. I'm going to follow you. Help me to live a life that honors our Father in heaven. Thank you, Father and Messiah, Jesus' name. We're ending the program now. If, if you prayed a prayer like that and you meant it with all your heart, contact us with the information on the screen there. We'll send you some literature that will help you Take your first steps follow, to follow Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord Jesus, bless all of our viewers today and teach us now more than ever how to watch for your coming for us, Lord Jesus. Amen. I pray the program has been a blessing to you today. It's going to get worse before it gets better. But when it gets better, it's going to be unimaginably better. So what do we need to do? Watch their form be ready. Messiah Jesus is coming any moment. Thank you for watching the program today. Watch Therefore is sponsored by the friends and partners of Watch Therefore Ministries. In future programs, we'll have many more Watch Therefore teachings from the Bible, worship, and exciting interviews with our believing partners in Israel and around the world. Please contact us at doveforisrael at gmail.com. That's D-O-V-F-O-R-I-S-R-A-E-L at gmail.com. And if you would like to subscribe to our newsletter, you can fill out a contact form on the website watchtherefore.tv. We also have audio programs available on our website watchtherefore.tv. We are on social media since it is a great tool to share the gospel and communicate with one another. You can also find us there at watchtherefore.tv. Until next time, we're watching for King Jesus to return. Watch Therefore and be ready. We know he came. The Lamb who was slain, he'll come again. Our conquering King on that day. His sword will go forth to take back and re